In our previous video, we saw how to set up an autocomplete using jQuery and Spring Boot. So as I start typing, you'll see that a list of suggestions appear, and they continue to filter down as I continue to type through these suggestions. Now in this video, we're going to see how to display a user-friendly name to the user while taking a primary key and posting that over to our form and then saving that into a database. We won't get to saving to a database in this video. We'll save that for a later video. Now why is this important? Well, if you take a look, what we're doing is we're saving specimens or specific plants at specific locations. And we know that we can relate specimens together by the scientific definition of a plant. In other words, there are many, many Fuji apple trees in the world. All of them produce Fuji apples, the kind that you buy in a store. So there's the scientific definition of Malus domestica Fuji, which is the name of the Fuji apple tree, and then a physical Fuji apple tree that might be in your front yard where you can pull apples off of it. That would be a specimen, a specific Fuji apple tree. Now we're saving specimens with a specimen ID, latitude, longitude, and description. And at the moment, we're just getting back a plant name from this autocomplete because in reality, the list of plants is coming from a JSON stream in a different source. But what would be ideal is if we didn't save the plant name in our specimens table because that's redundant with the plants table. In other words, if there are maybe 100,000 Fuji apple trees in the world, we don't need to save Malus domestica Fuji, Fuji apple, in every single Fuji apple tree. It's more efficient to have that saved in one place in a plants table, Malus domestica, Fuji apple, Fuji apple tree, and then simply link to that plants table from the specimens table using a plant ID. But to do that, we need the plant ID. So let's jump in and get started. The first thing that we need is we need to tweak our array of objects a little bit. Right now we're returning back a list of plant names just as strings. And what we need to do is change it to square bracket, open curly, label colon, and then the plant name, and then value colon, and then the plant ID. And this is, a, this, we're looking at jQuery's website here, so many thanks to them for providing this. We'll do that for each of our plants, and that's actually not as hard as it sounds, because Spring Boot's going to do a lot of this for us. This example should help to visualize what I'm explaining. This is the autocomplete endpoint that our autocomplete jQuery unit is currently hitting. And it's a very simple JSON stream. I can take this and I just had it filter by Redbud. But I can take this and I can put this into JSON Viewer. And what we see is it is a simple array of strings. As a matter of fact, there's not a name that corresponds to each of the values. It's just the values in quotes. And that's the simple array that we see here. We need to change that to be a bit more complex because instead of just strings, it's actually going to be objects with an attribute label and a value and an attribute called value and a value for that. We can represent that easily in Spring Boot by making a DTO that has an attribute called label and an attribute called value. So we'll simply go to our DTO package and say new Java class. We'll make this really simple. I can't think of a really good name for this class, so we'll just call it label value. Go ahead, add to get, and then private string label. And let's say private int value. Let's make this a Lombok class that will save us a whole lot of work. And our DTO is complete. And now we simply need to wire this up in our controller. So we see that our controller is currently returning a string, and we want it to return this two part object called label value. So let's change the generic identifier to that new label value DTO. And we know this response body annotation is going to produce JSON from whatever we return. So it's going to do a bit of reflection or introspection to look at those attributes and then produce that JSON stream that we need. Uh, we also need to change our return type here. And then notice we still have one red line left. So remember that we're getting back our plant names and then we were appending them to a list of just strings. But now we have a bit of a more complex list because instead of just strings, it's holding this new label value DTO type. So we need to create a new label value object and then populate it with the plant name or the plant to string if we wish, and also the plant ID. So at this point, you see that we've created this label value 
object, we've set the label to the plant's toString method, which is just the string representation of the object. And then we're taking the plant ID and setting that as the value. That's the value under the covers that the user doesn't need to see. And it's the global unique identifier that identifies this plant. I've started the application and I return back to the browser and I hit the endpoint one more time that feeds our autocomplete and we see that it is a more complex JSON object because we have name value, comma, name value, uh, close curly, comma, open curly, name, com, colon value, so on and so forth. So it's not a simple array of strings. At this point, it is an array of objects. I can take the source posted into JSON viewer.stack.hu and we see that sure enough, these look a lot more like objects than what we saw last time, which was simply a list of strings. So objects in JSON represented by curly, array represented by square bracket, and then we see that within this object, we have two different names and each name has a corresponding value. Now here's the nice thing. If I go back to our page and I refresh, we know that I've changed the format of the source of our autocomplete, but does the autocomplete still work? And the reason I ask that question is we still have several changes we need to make on the jQuery side so that we can take advantage of the label and the value. So if I start typing E-A-S-T, we see that sure enough, E-A-S-T-R-N, Sure enough, the autocomplete is still working, even with that different source. There is one funny side effect, though. If I type in Eastern like so, if I tab down and hit Enter, notice that it puts the value in this field. It puts the value 83. So it is not necessarily a good user experience because, oh, yeah, here we go. Yeah, okay, Eastern Red Cedar. And then instead of, instead of what the user typed, we see a number which is going to confuse the user. What we need to do, number one, we need to do a little bit of wiring in the HTML page where we have our jQuery autocomplete to take advantage of this new data stream. Number two, we need to take care of this behavior where the number appears. I'll confess it took me a while to figure this one out, and I finally found the answer on Stack Overflow. So I want to give credit to Rob Church, someone I don't know, but thank you very much for sharing this answer because it worked very well for me. Let's implement it. The first thing we need to do is make a hidden field, which is an HTML form field that the user simply doesn't see, and it's a good way to pass variables or values under the covers that would be distracting to the user. It's very similar to any other input field. So here you see we have one called plant name. Now we're gonna to need to make some changes on this one because you see the input ID is plant name, and the name is plant ID and the field is plant ID. So originally that made sense, but at this point we're confusing some terms. Eastern Redbud would be the plant name and 83 would be the plant ID. So I'm going to copy this. And the hidden field can really go anywhere. A lot of times they go to the bottom of a form like so. So copy that and we're going to call this new field plant ID. And we'll keep those other characteristics that we had of name plant ID and then th field plant ID, which remember the th field is what marries it up to the Java object that's going to receive all of this data once it's posted. So I'll clean up a few other things that are not needed just because this is a hidden field and what I've highlighted here is for visual components. One more thing we need to do is change the type to hidden. And then our hidden field is complete. And again, the user won't see this. It's just going to hold our plant ID in the background. I'm going to need that plant ID later, so I'm going to go ahead and copy it. Now I need to make some fixes up here to line number 58 because I'm differentiating between a, what a plant name is and what a plant ID is. So in this case, I no longer need the TH field. Um, I can probably change the name to plant name as well. That way this is unique. So that takes care of the HTML form. Now I'm going to go back up and remember what we're trying to do is we do not want to show the number in the autocomplete field. We want to show the text instead. We want to take the number, put it in the hidden field. So to do this, we need to override a function uh, that's available on this autocomplete function from jQuery. To override the function, we simply name the function we're overriding, which is select. And then we assign to it an inline function. We simply say function and then event comma UI. And this is JavaScript here. So if you're not 
incredibly familiar with JavaScript, don't worry about the syntax. Just know this is the syntax that we need to overwrite a function and get the behavior we want. And as I'm talking, I do see a red line here uh, because I'm specifying three properties, source, min, length, and then this select function. I do need to comma separate them, so we'll add a comma up there. Okay, now we have our select function and we're receiving an event and a UI element. We don't need the event, but we do need the UI element. So let's say ui.item.label. Remember what the label is from our JSON stream. It's that human readable string representation of our plant object. So let's take that label and let's store that as the value because that's what the user is going to see. Next, let's get a reference to that hidden field. And we can do it very similarly to how we did the autocomplete up here, where we kind of use the CSS selector syntax mixed in with a bit of JavaScript. So dollar sign, open paren, close paren, then open and close quotes. And then within that plant ID, which is that ID that we gave to our field, remember down here, plant ID, it is an ID. So we do need to preface it with the pound or the hash symbol, as you see there. Remember, this is the hidden field, so we're going to set the value to ui.item.value. Remember what the value is from our autocomplete JSON stream. It is that number that uniquely identifies the plant, and so that's what we're submitting in the background. One more thing. Remember the default value of this select function in jQuery is to take the value, not the label, and put it in the field that the user is going to see. We don't want that behavior. And so you see what we're doing here is we've created an inline function that we're using to override that select function. We need to do one more thing. Return false. That means don't call the super method, if you will. Don't call the inherited method. We've taken care of this. Thank you very much. No more logic to happen. I've reloaded the page and I've pre-populated it with a little bit of data so that we can see how the autocomplete works now. So description is Greenland National Plant, which what is the Greenland National Plant? Say it with me now. Dwarf fireweed. Dwarf fireweed. There we go. Now you notice as I type it, it does not show the plant ID or the specimen ID, and this is actually showing the two string of that plant object. I did edit it behind the scenes and take out the plant ID because I was showing that and I didn't want to confuse things. So nonetheless, you see, we just see a name. When I click, you see that we still just see a name. We don't see the plant ID appear. Watch what happens when I choose submit. IntelliJ lights up orange because I set a breakpoint, and we can take a look at our specimen. And what do we see here for plant ID? We see plant ID 6351. So you see it was able to resolve that plant ID based on the autocomplete that the user chose. Just for fun, let's go to plant places and search on a different plant. Let's say the Eastern Redbud. And by the way, do you notice the autocomplete that appears here in plant places? It is indeed the exact same thing I just showed you. It's that jQuery autocomplete using that exact same method that I just showed you. So we click on the Eastern Red Bud and you can see up towards the top, there's a unique ID 83. If we scroll down a bit, you can see that there's the Eastern Red Bud, there's the flower, and we have some detail on what the Eastern Red Bud is. But now let's change that to 6351, which was that ID that we just saw in the debugger. And what do we have? Oh my gosh, take a look at that. That is definitely Greenland, and that is definitely the dwarf fireweed, the national plant of Greenland. So in this video, we've seen how to make a more complex JSON stream that is emitting objects, and then use those objects in a jQuery autocomplete to show a user-friendly name to the user while passing a computer-friendly ID under the covers. I hope this video has been helpful, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.